Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and I was fortunate enough to play High Isles, the newest chapter in the Elder Scrolls Online early. High Isles will be releasing June 6th for PC and June 21st for consoles. You'll want to watch this video for a breakdown of what the chapter includes and a sneak peek and opinion of what the High Isle really brings to the Elder Scrolls Online in 2022. The ESO High Isle chapter requires an additional purchase beyond the base game or an ESO Plus subscription. The new chapter is what you've come to expect from the Elder Scrolls Online yearly releases. You're going to get a massive sprawling zone, which is over two islands, High Isle and Aminos. Never before seen lore and over 30 hours of questing. But what people really want to know is about the new massive card game, Tales of Tribute. Yes, I played the card game, and yes, we're going to talk about it. Also a new trial which a group of us completed on the private server called Dreadcell Reef. Two new companions, one of which is a Templar, yay, one button build incoming. New world events called Volcanic Vents, similar to Massive Dolmens, Hyrule Storms, and everything else. And a literal heap of new gear sets and some mind-bending mythics that could radically change the fundamentals of ESO. This will be a no-spoiler preview, and keep in mind I'm only allowed to show certain footage and pictures, but this chapter should be available to test soon, which I'll be streaming live on twitch.tv slash Gaming. So come watch me there, I'm great, or at least my mom thinks so. We're going to start with the most important thing you're probably going to want to know. Tales of Tribute, the card game. What is it? How do you play it? And is it fun? My experience with collectible card games comes from spending an inordinate amount of time playing Magic the Gathering in my middle school and high school years. What I love about collectible card games are the strategy, the imagination, the camaraderie, and a little bit of trash talk, but ultimately the competitiveness of it. I think if you have that mindset, you'll enjoy Tales of Tribute, but let me explain how this works. Once you unlock the chapter, you arrive in High Isles just like any other chapter. You're going to get prompted pretty early about the Tales of Tribute by a quest, which is going to lead you to a small area in the High Isles, which you can start competing against other NPCs, reading the tutorials, and learning the basics of the game. You'll quickly be thrown into a match with very little knowledge about the UI or a practical knowledge about the game, and I found it pretty overwhelming at first, but within an hour, Meathead Deltia figured it out. Consider the card game resource base. You're using cards in your hands to build up resources, one of which is Prestige, a method for winning the game if you collect 40 first. At the start of the match, you select your patron decks which you own, and you can build up and collect other ones. The major difference with this card game and let's say Magic the Gathering is this. You and your opponent have a shared set of cards mixed together in what is called the Tavern. What you bring to the match could ultimately hurt you or help you, and it's an interesting mechanic once it plays out over the course of a match. Moreover, those decks and patrons which you selected are kind of like the leaders of the deck, if you will. Patrons can be interacted with through resources and turned to your favor. If you have all patrons in your favor, you win the match, regardless of your prestige. Thus, you end up with two possible mechanisms for winning. Let me try to Deltia Method Barney level explain this. Deep breath. This is Tales of Tribute. The game essentially comes down to using your hand to play what would be the equivalent of lands in Magic the Gathering. With those resources, what are called gold and power in Tales of Tribute. You can spend those resources on tavern or patrons. Thus, you have this back and forth give and take between making sure the enemy isn't securing patrons or building that prestige. The game becomes a resource race with tons of math, meta strategies, and excitement. There is some minor attacking with agent cards, but I'll save that later for a much more complex video. I had fun learning the card game and got a basic amount and understanding of how it works and why someone would want to play it. I think the vast majority of ESO players will like this system. The vast amount of ESO players love collecting things, they love traveling around Tamriel, and actually PvP, which this system does have, in a competitive environment. So you're going to be on the hunt trying to build up your decks and cards and fighting both NPCs and players. It's a very robust and well thought out system. I was very skeptical about the resource driven mechanic, but when I actually playing it, it is quite fun. 
Same thing with the lack of attacking or combat. Yes, it's the meathead in me that likes to do something like that, but I really did enjoy it. My word of advice would be if you jump into this, there's a really helpful book in the tutorial section area in High Isles. Read that book over and over and over. That's actually what I did to learn the game and just kept experimenting and tinkering. About an hour or two in, it becomes pretty second nature and you're balancing your resources to basically play cards, manage the Patreons, and you just have your mind on a lot of different things, thinking one, two, three, four steps ahead. Or if you're like me, just one step ahead. Again, I mentioned competitive PvP, and there is a lot of that, with ranked leaderboards, rewards, and even a new queuing system in the group menu. To be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed. Something this robust and vast wasn't added to the current existing system like Battlegrounds. Because me personally, I enjoy ESO for the combat, the learning, the tinkering with the builds, and experimenting. But again, I think the vast amount of ESO players enjoy the variety that the game has to offer. The collectible, never-ending hamster wheel of, oh, I gotta catch them all, Pokemon time gameplay. And if that's you, you're gonna absolutely love this. And next up, how was the trial? Dread Sail Reef. So a group of us, 11 of us, completed this on the private server on normal difficulty. I think the developers did a good job reintroducing previously released mechanics, no spoiler, and also introducing some new one to give us a fresh take on the trial. The trial does have a similar feel, an epic buildup like Rock Crow, but it has a lot more of exploration, secret rooms, chambers with extra bosses, and feels a lot more like an adventure versus instance-based thematical trial. If the developers were aiming to have a 12-player trial pirate adventure in an ESO, well, they nailed it. Not to mention there's a huge new sets of gear that you'll go nuts with and a new mount to collect for the sweatiest PVEers out there. Overall, my favorite trial in the game still remains Rock Grow. And the reason why is I love the Daedric vibe, the big huge lava, the epic buildup of Zabaka in the final fight. But Dreadsail Reef is a worthy addition to trials in PVE and I think the vast majority of ESO players will love this, especially if you're a Jack Sparrow's Pirates of the Caribbean fan. Next up, we have gear sets, and there are some mega ones. I can't show you all the pictures, and the items are subject to change, but there's a lot of new mythics to collect. Five that I counted. One that will make my buddy hack the Minotaur's beloved one bar builds a reality is a mythic that locks you into one bar, but giving you a massive buff to max stats, recovery, and damage. Yes, you can't bar swap, but you can become super powerful. This could easily lead to even PvP one bar builds for the average player who struggles with the combat in ESO, and I'm excited to see how they work in reality. If I can beat VMA and Vatishram Hollows with one button, what can I do with this mythic? Not to brag. You have a radical new mythic that gains inspiration, alliance rank, alliance skill, and monster kill experience based off how many Shalador library books have been collected essentially mages, books, and so on. This mythic also gets me excited for some out-of-the-box gear sets and mythics to collect that add some power, but also some flavor to the general builds or some utility out there, and I think that's what's missing from the champion point system, so it's good to see it being implemented into at least mythics worth to collect. Is this as good as a new class, a new weapon skill line? No, not in my opinion, but as a content creator, I'm excited to collect and tinker on the PTS and see how the augment current builds and new ones. I can't get into all of the sets, but more of those on the PTS once it launches. Moving on, and that's companions. I also tested the two new companions, Amber, a Khajiit sorcerer, and Isabel, a Breton Templar, which of course she's my favorite. Isabel seemed to perform much better than previous companions due to her massive raw healing as a Templar base class. And both of us were able to get to the first boss in the new trial, just us two, which I thought was a good indication of her power. And then you have the massive zone, which is gorgeous and more dense than Blackwood on launch. The zone looks very Pirates of the Caribbean, as you would imagine, full of life, animals, creatures, monsters, and what you would expect from Elder Scrolls. It contains the usual suspects, world bosses, public dungeons, delves, sky shards, and a new world event called Volcanic Vents. Think of these like any other chapter-based world event, a hyped-up public dungeon or dolmen, but fun to do and worthwhile to collect the new gear sets. And I'm sure there's some mythic leads on them. You'll have three overland gear sets, five mythics, new trial sets, craftable sets, so there is an absolute ton to collect. 
Most of the sets I peeked at seemed very strong, but only a couple were over the top in terms of power. Either way, a lot to explore, do, and collect. Zaw said there's over 30 hours of questing, and I just did the initial part of the quest to get familiar with the zone. But the lore nuts out there, the people that really love the game for the story, you're going to get some never-before-seen lore in the Elder Scrolls series, so this is probably a must-have chapter for you. I also found a new mechanic similar to one in Craghorn, where you click on something called the Daedric Blessing, which is a random anomaly sort of thing, out in the middle of the zone. It dramatically increased my experience gains for a short period. I think it was 25%. I didn't experiment with this buff too much, but it might be a new grinding strategy for champion points and leveling, and new locations might emerge with this buff around the world. Didn't experiment too much with it, but it's really kind of interesting. Zoss also added some quality of life features with this, and that's a quick slot item, which can now sort companions, consumables, and so on. Thus, you can just quickly sort through the wheel and quickly add multiple presets, and it's a great addition to the game. Overall, what are my thoughts on the chapter, and should you buy it? Zenimax Online Studio does one thing very well, and that's horizontal progression. Giving you some increase in power with new sets, but a whole lot to do that doesn't necessarily increase your power, but allows you to collect and fiddle with. You can spend countless hours in the new zone questing, collecting and experimenting with a card game, Tales of Tribute. You'll be traveling around the world collecting cards and decks and PvPing with huge incentives and rewards. The PvE crowd out there gets exactly what they've come to expect, a new sprawling trial that adds new and returning mechanisms for fun fights. And the questers will get over 30 plus hours of never before seen lore which will make them drool with excitement. I imagine the hardcore ESO PvP crowd will be quite disappointed with this chapter. My ultimate hope is that some of the rewards and competitive nature of Tales of Tribute the card game will trickle over into other aspects of the game, like Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, and even Imperial City. But for now, I feel like the chapter has something for everyone, whether it's item sets to collect and tinker with builds like me, a massive sprawling zone, or a fleshed out card game that will last for years. But what do you think? Can't wait to hop on the PTS and play this live and interact with you, the audience, testing out the new mythics, farting around, trying to get the mythic leads, nine new five-piece gears, one bar builds. Hopefully we can get a trial together and run people through that and kind of show you what it looks like. So go to twitch.tv slash gaming if you want to see me play this live. I appreciate you coming and watching this video. Leave me a comment on what you think about the chapter. Good? Not so good? What would you like to add it in the game? And I appreciate you watching.